area yet. But speaking of New Zealand, we have Ronan O'Gara on the line, but he's not in New Zealand. It's a bye week in the Super League, so Ronan is on holidays in Fiji this morning. Speaking of Tremor, I don't know what I prefer to be in holidays in Tremor or Fiji, but Ronan, since you're here and we're talking about Galway this morning, what's your Galway best Galway memory? The Galway races or yeah. going to Galway? In general. Either or. What's your favourite thing about Galway? Since myself and Johnny Ward are here, we've taken over and we spent the morning talking about how great it is to be from Galway and we're blessed. You're not blessed, but you get to come on holiday there every once in a while. What's your favourite part of it? I, I've been to Galway many times. My, both my parents are West of Ireland people, uh, Mayo and Sligo. So going back 30 years, we were packed into the car and an eight to 10 hour journey up those uh, roads. Um, but I think we bypassed Galway always, but um, I have cousins in Galway, as the Lillises, 10 children, good healthy Just the 10? <laughs> just the 10. Pre-contraception um, those days. <laughs> um, so, uh, oh, what a great place to go, Galway. Yeah, I love going to Galway, but uh, the problem is when you were playing professional rugby for as long as I was, you don't appreciate it. It's just like uh, another hotel, another town, and out to the... Out to the um, Dog track for hopefully a three nil victory for Munster was usually the scoreline in our days, you know. So um, no, but it's a, it, it is a, a great city, a great city. I have to I have to bring up one thing with you. If you are in Fiji, could you not have done a little bit better in terms of the imagery in the background than than? Um, yeah, why no, aren't you on a beach? No, it's, <laughs> it's 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 um, <laughs> it is what what you call it, it is. Uh, it's nine o'clock, is it, or it's eight o'clock? It just I had to whip the kids off the table here from the and said I have to go on the radio and I went, Dad, if you're on the radio, why do you need us? They don't need to see you. And I said, no, no, it's the new radio, so I don't <laughs> really get the Skype. So, um, yeah, I know. I uh, Yeah, I should post a thing or two, but that's not really my scene. What a beautiful, beautiful country. Amazing people. Um, and have a down week. So, um, yeah, Scott Robertson, who's the boss of the Crusaders, a few contacts out here. So, uh we all decided we'd come out for a week, a bit of, um, we were playing here actually in the 1st of June against the Chiefs, um, so I'm not doing any recce for that, it's a complete holiday. Would they recognise you actually, the Fijians out there? Yeah, they do, yeah, it's, uh, it's amazing, all right, they're Ryan O'Gara or something, <laughs> and, uh, no, no, <laughs> Ronan O'Gara. No, 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 your grand is grand, Ryan will do. <laughs> it's a cross between Ronan and Brian. You know, it's Ronan oh, look, welcome to my life. Ryan Jeepers, I spent my life explaining my name, so if, if you're getting Ryan O'Gara in Fiji, you're not doing too bad. Uh. <laughs> But come here, yeah, the big yeah. story breaking overnight there um, here for us, and I'm well, sure you guys are interested, is Israel Falau. Is, um, oh, the key. Who have we got there now? Bruna, my wife has that. come in. She's from the three outside. She's from the three outside. She went out to the garden. But fair play so, to her uh, for actually going outside, unlike you. Yes. <laughs> I, like, I like the way he says Galway races, clobber for the year. Sort That's of your hat now for Ladies' Day on Thursday yeah. and Galway, the Galway races. But your Galway races is that's not till when August. Isn't August, it? Yeah. August, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, he's Sorry. taking away the hat now. He doesn't want to let the yeah. ladies know of the competition. No, I do. I do. I just, <laughs> I just gotta. But come here, uh, back, to, back to actual rugby. Um, Israel Folau, the story's just come in from BBC Sport that apparently Australia end his contract over his anti-gay messages and rhetoric. It was only ever going to go that way, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, exactly. And I'm not trying to kick it to touch, but I think, um, you know what I mean? Just the more you talk about this, the more, I suppose, he gets oxygen and the more... He probably wants to achieve what he wanted to out of this, but uh, it, you know, I think it comes back to a lack of respect for for everyone within rugby. It's great to have values and it's great to be have strong values, but the most important thing I think you learn when you go into a team is you learn about respect. And I don't think these comments or his comments are respectful, and um, you know, it's particularly disappointing, I suppose, considering especially what happened in Christchurch. Um, with an essential, you know, a fantastic rugby player and a role model to come out with comments like that. It's just, it's not acceptable in this day and age. It will have, funnily enough, even on this side of the world, reverberations as such, because of what Billy Vanapola also kind of weighed into it. And obviously, Champions Cup weekend is coming up next and, you know, he may or may not play now. 
a Billy Vinopola might play, will he not? Yeah, well, you know, he came off the bench for Saracens, but you know, you'd be thinking if if uh, if. If um, if uh, Israel's been getting getting the heave ho, you'd imagine Billy's also going to be getting at the very least a very stern word, at the very yeah, least. Yeah, I presume so. I presume he'd be pulled aside, or he has been pulled aside. He'll have to probably release a statement, but I presume um, there's probably. They're saying they're taking the matter very seriously and will be handled internally. While the Rugby Football Union will meet the England forward next week to discuss the social media posts. Yeah, but I think that obviously, uh, and Saracen is probably good teammates around him, and he needs to probably uh, decide uh, exactly what, what road he wants to go down. But I presume for Lowe, probably the difference with him is probably he has an option of playing league, he has an option of playing AFL. So, in terms of the contract terminated, I wouldn't say that's too big an issue for him. But Billy Vinopal, I think one of Saracen's strengths is probably they are very united, that they are very. Um, uh, strong in their stick togetherness. So I think, um, I presume by liking a comment, he, he probably uh, come out with um, a statement saying that uh, he probably distanced himself from that and then this will, will be resumed. Well, as far as I, I can gather, he quite doubled down. You know, he was very, very uh, vehement in supporting Israel Falao's right to have his opinion. Well, like, this is the thing I'd, I'd, my take on this for what it's worth, Ronan. Like, I, I totally defend anyone to the right of free speech and the right to your own yes. opinion. But in the context of, of something like this, and I don't know if you came across many sort of gay rugby players when you played, can you imagine um, a, a, a gay rugby player who's in the closet and, you know, he's maybe thinking of how, how best I'm going to deal with this in a, in a, in a macho environment? environment and then you have to deal with this sort of stuff coming out and you have references to hell and all of this and just how difficult that must be for that type of person. Yeah exactly Johnny but even more so I think what brings it even more home for me I thought about it earlier on today I have four boys okay so there could come a day in 10 years time or less than that that one of them goes to me dad and gay okay so then you have someone that's uh, I suppose as influential as Israel Falau and he's posting that one of my kids, if they were gay, will go to hell. You wouldn't feel great as a dad having to deal with that. There's just no need for that. And it's not warranted and it's not respectful to, to I suppose, to what we learn um, in school, in life, in general. You know, I think it's great to have strong beliefs, but it's, I think you can have, you'd be driven and having beliefs is very different. But I think from, from my point of view, it's just, it's, it steps over the line grossly and it's completely disrespectful for for what we all essentially stand for. It's um, certainly every once in a while, you know, in sport, and we've just been saying all day really how sport, it's, it doesn't matter at all, but it also matters a great amount. And sometimes the news outside the sport can become, kind of encapsulate what's actually happening in the sport. And because of Israel Flau and all the kerfuffle there in the last week, you'd nearly forget that we're coming up to Champions Cup semi-finals. We've got a really good weekend coming up. Yeah, you do, exactly. And, and, and that's the most important thing. He is a high-profile individual and he is, you know, I think there is no one in, in the game with aerial skills. But unfortunately, we're not talking about anything got to do with the pitch. And you are right. And I think especially in a small country like Ireland, sports stars are hugely influential and they are role models. And... Um, what they say sometimes becomes uh, hugely important, but in this case, it's just it's turned extremely sour, and, and and I don't think it should be represented because it's it's so tough. If you're if you were very strong willed and you had, I suppose, um, a good network around you in terms of how how do you deal with this from a, a point of view that. Um, gay people are going to hell it just makes in this day and age it just makes absolutely no sense and we have uh, next weekend we actually have live commentary on saracens they're going to be taking on monster obviously over there we're going to have live commentary here on off the ball i'd imagine that will become a factor with all the stuff now with billy vinopole as well in the background that might be something that monster might be able to harness especially if it turns out that he may end up not playing or coming off the bench or at the very least psychologically use it against saracens yeah, I think um, it's a great week as a Monster Rugby player these weeks. I think I was kind of get my thoughts together before I came on air. I was lucky enough to play in 10 of these European Cup semi-finals, which obviously the success rate or the transfer rate wasn't great, but to play in 10 of them, 
we were really consistent. We probably lacked a little bit of a cutting edge, no doubt about that. But I think to play in a semi-final, it's a great, great uh, week. You really, really get excited because you're essentially 80 minutes away from from getting to the big uh, the big day out, and that, and that's special in itself. So I think this morning there will be a pep in the monster by step, irrespective of having a great performance against Treviso at the weekend. Now you have kind of 38 people that feel very valued and feel very probably on top of their game from sending out essentially a B team to Treviso and getting a bonus point well against them. So there will be internally the guys that played there, they kind of half be hoping their name will be read out in the team, but it probably won't be. But that's not a bad thing either, just having that genuine competition for places. Um, um, Saracens, yes, they are favourites, no doubt about that. But as you've seen with... England gone to the Aviva on the first day. No one really gave them a chance and they blitzed Ireland. Um, are many people giving Munster a chance? I think deep down, not really. But uh, it's set up for f- beautifully for Munster to just tip away under the radar, use the Billy, Billy Vernapola uh, stuff in whatever way they want to their advantage. Just keep it there at arm's length and have a kind of a really smash and grab plan up their sleeve and hopefully go in there and do the business. I'll be working actually at the Leinster v Toulouse game here on Saturday. That's going to be here in Dublin. I know Toulouse came here a few months ago and we were expecting a good game and it was just, it just, they collapsed completely. It was just Leinster kind of steamrolled them. I can't imagine the same thing's going to happen this, this weekend on Easter Sunday. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe you can, Marla. I think it can easily because... What do I know? <laughs> no, no, not in that regard. From Galway run. And I spent five years there, and that's, I just think, uh, the behavioural traits of, of French teams, you know, I mean, it takes 21 days to change a habit. Mm. So what happens in top 14 is that they're very indisciplined and their capacity to crack under uh, a modicum of pressure, it gets to them. This is semi-final. This is the Aviva. This is in Dublin, away from home. Yes, Toulouse are having a season um, better than anyone could have expected, but is in their heads, are they in bonus territory already? If you're in bonus territory before you're taking on Leinster, you're in big, big trouble. But I think um, what probably hasn't been mentioned, I think this Reggie Sonis, who was the director of rugby in Bandon Grammar and in the Bandon um, school is now coaching Toulouse. And um, he was extremely popular in West Cork and uh, I think left a big imprint down there. And, I, and now he's the forwards coach with Toulouse. And um, I think everyone is raving about him. So that's that's sort of kind of a nice, I suppose, subplot to the fact that um, Toulouse have great history in the Champions Cup and they're a hugely successful team. Um, but it's um, you know it, it, it's I don't think the aura around Leinster is as strong as it was six months ago you look at mm. it maybe after was it the first round of when they I, I was actually in the ground when they played Wasps in the RDS was the first game around yeah, one it was yeah it yeah. was extremely extremely good and I left the ground going well um take an incredible team to beat them but I think I think they are beatable where are Obviously, the deficiencies there now Ron is pardon me where are the deficiencies in Leinster at the moment um well there are deficiencies um the reality is Johnny there's deficiencies everywhere if you get tempo into your game and you're at them it's the same as you know before Ireland went played England I wouldn't have been able to give you many deficiencies but like physicality, slowing up Ireland's rock ball, not letting them play, stopping them after two phases, not probably seeing the space for kick space. So uh, what applies in green applies in blue. So I think in that regard, um, it, it, Leinster will have to play um, will have to play well, irrespective of them being at home to beat to beat to lose because. Toulouse play differently to a lot of teams and the fact that they've chanced their arm even though it is semi-final rugby a lot of teams would be very structured but Toulouse will actually uh, 
really play an offload game. And when you play an offload game, if that clicks, they could be dangerous. But if it becomes uh, wishy-washy, it would be very, very uh, manageable for Leinster. Um, a team that would have been many a time accused of being wishy-washy, sometimes not their own fault, they just didn't have the supports and funding and stuff. And since we're from Galway, we may as well talk about them. Connacht, what a weekend. Like, it's just yeah, such a it's great brilliant. story. Yeah, it is, and it's. I think it's been building. I think their building blocks have probably have been getting stronger. Um, I know I don't have the nitty gritty of what happens internally there, but watching from afar, I know that they have seemed to have a cost of people. Um, he appeals to the public in Galway, which is very important. I think they've always um, played for each other. They've got a strong manager. I think they've made some good appointments off the pitch. They've got. Uh, Eric Elwood, who's a legend down there, back involved. Uh, Gavin Duffy is very popular there. But they probably have competition for places like they haven't had in the past. And you need that more. You, you need, you know what I mean, two and to one in at least 10 positions. Otherwise, you don't have a chance. And I think, you know what I mean, the pressure was on them at the weekend to get a result against Cardiff. And to be able to do that um, speaks volumes for them. And uh, Ireland and the game... Um, in in Ireland really need a strong Connacht and what they did in Murrayfield beat Leinster a few years ago I think it's probably underappreciated you know we talked about Tiger Woods last night but what Connacht did um, well sorry in Twickenham it wasn't Murrayfield in Twickenham in the final uh, was incredible uh, a sporting occasion and, and a sporting achievement and um they obviously had a, a few change of course just since then, but the buzz seems to be back and uh, the West is awake and there's no place like uh, the West uh, for getting in behind them because obviously uh, GA is huge out in, in the West of Ireland and I think there's a huge appeal for that. But I think Connacht Rugby now is, is alive and well and it's great that they probably have someone like Jack Carty who's driving it, who's always been a really skillful player, but probably has got a lot more of a backbone than than a lot of other players have, and and that's really fantastic to see. You mentioned uh, Tiger Woods there. Were you watching him? when you Did you have time on the beach in Fiji? Believe. No, I was asleep, and I missed everything, and I woke up. He won and, uh, anyway. Uh. Of course he won, but jeez, I think I'm in my 40s, so... I've kind of grown up watching this guy and idolising this guy and um, at, it, it, you know, I think uh, there's a great quote, I think, about adversity causes most people to break, others break records. Mm. And that was the one thing that sprung to mind. And uh, I think, you know, I haven't, I haven't I've seen it, I saw his winning put, obviously, just on, on Twitter, but um, I think to have, you know what I mean, it just sums up Golf is very different because it's a mental game, and you know, I mean, father time doesn't really catch in golf as much as it would in other sports. But I think, uh, you know, for for me, the key learnings out of it are is that it's just the mind. The mind is so powerful, and it's it's your area more or less. So your well, mm. sometimes my, my well, mind is just shook altogether these days. I don't yeah. know whether I'm coming or going. <laughs> but uh, listen, thanks very much for your time, though. We do appreciate it. We're going to let you go now. Yeah. You can get your flowers together. You can get your hat ready for the races and go. And myself and Johnny Ward will take you. Any we'll update on his you. horse, actually? Yeah, on, on his week horse? Week to week, yeah. Yes, yeah. No, sure. I get the old talk and text from Joseph. And um, all he's doing now is I see he's making appointments and he's hired Brendan Powell. Mm. in the last 24 hours which seems to be a shrewd sign but um, no I think um, I mentioned you Johnny alright and you oh yeah some fella but sure well, there's no no mention of my horse Johnny so you might be he said he was on the show so when you're on to him next we'll get a little bit of info from my man um, Paul was down at um Paul Shannon was in the mm. sales in Sydney, so I'm waiting for an update. But we we'll keep um, you posted. Yeah, we'll keep the faith. We'll keep the faith. Well, we'll be I'm, back for some of I'm definitely looking forward to see what Ronan O'Garan Millinery comes up now with the hats <laughs> over the next few months. Ronan, thanks a million for your time. We'll have John Duggan 